It is so important that a person feels safe, safe enough to tell their story. That's what I'd like to do today. And I know that there are many children and many, many women in this audience who have a story to tell. In fact, all of us do. Statistically, did you know that four out of every 10 women has been sexually abused? Six, statistically, out of 10 have been abused in some form, including physical or sexual or a violent domestic way. This is a huge issue for women, for our children, for our sons and our daughters, for our neighbors and our friends. It is so crucial that we find a way, a forum, a place, a person to share our stories with. This is the healing power that takes place between women. This is such an important thing that we help those we can influence tell their stories not keep their secrets so that they can truly heal. Our stories are filled with ups and downs, heartbreaks and disappointments, twists and turns, and a few exquisite moments of pure joy. Now, I met Superior Court Judge Charles Gill at a National Child Abuse Conference that we had both been asked to keynote speak at. It was being held in Ogden, Utah. Charles Gill came from Connecticut to be a speaker, and this is how his bio went, filled with credentials. Connecticut Superior Court Judge Charles Gill is a tireless advocate for the rights of children. In 1988, he co-founded the National Task Force for Children's Constitutional Rights and is a nationally recognized expert on children's issues. This man has been on every talk show known to man, um, including 2020 and Nightline, all of these different things. Judge Gill has been a lawyer for 40 years and has served as a judge for the past 20 years. So he was the keynote speaker one day, and I was the keynote speaker the next. Here this little girl from Idaho with no credentials like that, but with a story to tell. Well, after Judge Gill and I met for dinner and we swapped stories, he said something to me that has stuck with me. He said, you know, Jan, he said, I may have credentials. He said, but you, and I quote, you will do more good in the helping, healing, and educating of people than I ever can because you have lived it, survived it, and managed to thrive. He said, this is a story every person over the age of 12 needs to hear and read. Others could learn so much from the mistakes your parents made and the red flags they missed. And he knew what he was talking about because he had dealt with, has dealt with this area um, of sexual predators and pedophiles for, for years and years and years. He said, um, what they learned and the mistakes that they may share, the things that others may learn, and also what to do before and after such a trauma takes place can greatly help anyone in their own healing process. I want to lend my support and credibility to what you're doing, he said, and would like to write the foreword and afterward to your book, which he did. The way my mother has mixed the events and feelings and trauma that were unfolding at home, along with the thoughts and feelings of the little 12-year-old girl, away from everything and everyone she knew, is so compelling. And every word of it is true. I will give you my side of this story, and I won't be able to tell you all of the details. You'll have to purchase the book, which is available um, out in the hallway, if you'd like to hear my mother's side of the story as well. I'd like to start with what Judge Gill said in the front of our storybook, Stolen Innocence, the Jan Broberg story. I was multitasking last March, a year ago, watching Dr. Phil when the, the breaking news that Elizabeth Smart had been found broke onto the television. I was absolutely riveted to the television set. I could not stop listening and immediately I began making phone calls, first to my parents. Mom, Dad, she's been found, she's alive, thank you, I'm alive, I'm sitting here, I'm so grateful, isn't this a wonderful day? They weren't home, I left a message. <laughs> it went on and on and on, which many of my messages do. And then I made a few other calls and then my telephone started to ring. Friends and family, my retired FBI agent, my police investigator, all calling to find out how Jan Broberg was doing. Are you having post-traumatic stress syndrome? 
or do you want to be a mentor to this little girl? A mentor, I cried, a mentor. <laughs> of course, I haven't met her yet. I'm not mentoring. I'm mentoring you. <laughs> and so that was a very emotional day for me. Um, as the news uh, proceeded, they began interviewing people on the streets of Salt Lake City about the news and asking them their reactions. And many people responded with, oh, we're so grateful. We, we've been praying for her. We're happy for the family. And then it came to this one woman. Do I remember how to do this? Which one? This video thing? Is that it? Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> Do I push it again? Help! Oh, I'm so technically challenged. <laughs> Wait. Okay, Corey's coming. Corey to the rescue! Let's hear a round for Corey! <laughs> Show me which one. The, on the underside? On the underside. Now, who would put the button on the underside of the thing? Okay, only a man. They designed this, obviously. It should say, push here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Obviously, it wasn't a woman. All right. So, this one woman took me by such surprise. She just crossed her arms in her car, and she said, I'll never forget it. Well, I think this is just disgusting. Here she is right under our noses. Why didn't she run into the street or start screaming or pick up a phone and call home? Didn't she see the signs and the posters? She must have known how much time and money was being spent trying to find her. I quit crying. I was stunned. It was a pivotal moment for me. I went to my computer, I sat down, and I wrote to the only person I knew might be able to help me. Dear Oprah. <laughs> I have a story to tell, and I am now ready to tell it. Obviously, the public is grossly uneducated on the powers of brainwashing and mind control. Do you know what this woman I just heard on the television said? <laughs> and I wrote my story a little bit in synopsis to Oprah Winfrey. I told her a little bit about the fact that I had been kidnapped twice, that I had been brainwashed extensively, that I had been sexually abused. And I asked her, I said, thank you, first of all, for making the public aware that these things happen. You've done a great service. We have to do a better job of educating the public on brainwashing. We still don't know what it is or how to fix it, how to recognize it. And it happens in a much lesser degree than it did to me. Just a threat to a child. You tell and I'll kill your mommy. Or if you'll do this, you can pet my kitty. Those subtle, and sometimes not, threats are all forms of brainwashing, of controlling someone else. I know for a fact that if Elizabeth's mother had been standing behind her in a grocery store, she would not have turned around and said, Mom, it's me, Elizabeth, help get me out of here. She wouldn't have. I know that, because I've lived it. I am so thankful for the opportunity that was given me today to share my story with you. And I think as we look at this theme, above all else, you are a woman. Yes, you are, a woman with a story. You're a woman with a voice. So speak up. With your hearts full of empathy, please use them. Use the feelings you have of love and outrage of empathy and anger to create something better and to change the world that it's a safer place for someone else. There's a brain in your head. Use it. Educate others. There's service in your hands. Reach out. Persistence is in your feet. Go someplace. And you all have souls that scream for justice as well as for mercy. Please do something. We have a, a bookmark that we want all of you to have, uh, whether you buy a book or not, that has some website addresses on it. If something that you've heard today has touched you, or if something you read in our book or some other literature touches you, would you please take three minutes to change the world? Sit at your computer, take three minutes, write a statement, tell the people on that list, Oprah especially, and others that are on there, We've given you the easiest way you could ever do 
to change the world. Tell them about this story, some other story, and say we need more education because it is information. Information is inspiration. Information is power. And that's what we need. We need more information and more education. And you can be a part of that by taking a few minutes and emailing those people who are in a position to spread this word. I am a woman above everything else, and I can make a difference in my own life and in the lives of others. Every day, there should be something of healing and helping. Healing and feeding of your own soul, balanced with helping and lifting some other soul. And then it becomes this great circle of womankind and womanly kindness. This circle of healing and helping will bring utter joy and meaning to what it is to be a woman. And remember, ladies, whoever roars the loudest wins. Above everything else, first I am a woman. Hear me roar. Thank you very, very much.